September 23rd, Padre Pio of Petrocina, Confessor, First Order. Along southern Italy's Adriatic coast, high on Mount Gargano, in a little town called San Giovanni Rotondo, stands the 17th century Capuchin church and friary of Santa Maria delle Grazie. On September 20th, 1918, Padre Pio, a young priest who had been ordained eight years earlier, had just celebrated Holy Mass in the church and was kneeling alone in one of the choir stalls, absorbed in prayer, making his thanksgiving. For a brief moment, he saw our Lord before him, and his soul was filled with wondrous joy. When the vision was gone, he felt sharp pains in his hands and feet and sighed. Padre Pio had become a stigmatic like his holy father, Francis. Though some women had received the stigmata since the 13th century, he was the first priest in the history of the church to bear the five wounds on his body. They were bleeding wounds and caused him much suffering for a full half century. But they never dimmed his joyfulness, his serenity, his sense of humor. He realized that the stigmata were a charism granted by God for the good of souls and the church. They were not a guarantee of sanctity. Padre Pio was canonized because of his great love of God and neighbor, his union with God, his life of prayer and penance and obedience, and heroic priestly apostolate in the confessional. Francesco Forgioni, the later Padre Pio, was born of simple, hard-working farm people on May 25, 1887. He received his primary education privately. At the age of 15, he joined the Capuchin Franciscans, and in 1910, he was ordained a priest. After he received the stigmata, Padre Pio became a pious sensation and many people came from elsewhere to visit him. Pope Benedict XV said in 1921, Padre Pio is indeed an extraordinary man. He is one of those whom God sends from time to time to earth to convert mankind. A few years later, the genuineness of his stigmata was questioned. In 1924 and again in 1931, Padre Pio was forbidden to say Mass publicly and to hear confessions. The faithful could not make pilgrimages to him or write to him or read certain books about him. He submitted in perfect obedience and without a word of complaint. After the ban was lifted, he continued the extraordinary work in the confessional that he had begun even before 1918. His day began with the celebration of Holy Mass at 5 a.m. His Mass usually lasted about one hour and a half. There were long pauses of silent meditation and long mementos of the living and the dead. Otherwise, he said the Mass, the mass prayers like any other good priest. After Mass, he spent some time in thanksgiving and then drank a glass of water, his sole breakfast. After that, he commenced hearing confessions and continued doing so till noon, except for an interruption at 10 o'clock. According to Italian custom, he heard the men in the sacristy without the screen and the women in the confessional box, which had a low iron grill and a gate around it to prevent the overanxious from coming too close. To keep order, each penitent also had to get a numbered ticket the previous day. At 10, Padre Pio distributed Holy Communion and blessed the religious articles the people had with them. He also blessed the sick. <clears throat> At noon, he took his only meal of the day, usually, usually a bit of ricotta cheese, a piece of bread, some vegetables, rarely some meat or eggs, a few hundred calories. Only during the hot summer did he take a glass of beer with his meal, later replaced by lemonade, or water with some black coffee in it. 
After dinner, he spent some time with his confreres in common recreation, and then returned to the confessional and remained for several hours as a rule, as long as there were penitents waiting to see him. Afterwards, and late into the night, he spent a long time in prayer and quiet meditation. Sometimes in the evening, confreres brought a pint of beer to him in his room, but he shared it so generously that he drank hardly more than a mouthful. By his great gift of spiritual counsel and guidance, Padre Pio brought peace of mind to countless souls, but he was also desirous of helping those who were afflicted with physical suffering. A great monument to his great practical charity is the fine big new hospital on Mount Gargano, above the Capuchin Friary. It had its beginning when he discussed the project in 1940 with three shipwrecked souls. To build a modern hospital some 2,400 feet above sea level on a barren mountain slope without water and electricity, 25 miles away from Foggia, the nearest town of importance, seemed to be a crazy scheme. Small contributions were made and the work was begun. The debt soared, but then an unexpected gift of 1.3 million lira was received. Work on the hospital had to be suspended during World War II, but after the war it was resumed. Through the influence of Barbara Ward, an English woman who visited Padre Pio in 1947, the UNRRA assigned 250 million lira towards the new hospital, and it was completed. Padre Pio was called to his heavenly reward on September 23, 1968. He was 81 years old. About 100,000 attended his funeral. His body is entombed in the crypt of the Church of Our Lady of Grace. He was canonized in 2002 by St. John Paul II. Words of Padre Pio and a prayer. The reason why Padre Pio wanted to build a hospital on Mount Gargano, though his only resources were his trust in God, lay in the fact that he saw our Lord himself in every suffering human being. He gave to the hospital the name of the House of the Alleviation of Suffering. Rising above selfishness, he said, we must bow down to the suffering and the wounds of our fellow men. In every sick man, it is Jesus in person who is suffering. In every poor man, it is Jesus himself who is languishing. In every man who is both sick and poor, Jesus is doubly visible. Those who were afflicted with a spiritual cross or a temptation, Padre Pio consoled and encouraged with words which were characterized by largeness of vision and good spiritual common sense. An example is the following advice which he wrote to an over-anxious soul. Walk with simplicity in the way of the Lord and do not torment your spirit. Learn to hate your faults, but to hate them calmly. Another example are these words of his. The most beautiful creed is the one we pronounce in the, the hour of darkness. And still another, the life of a Christian is nothing but a constant struggle against itself, and its beauty does not become manifest except at the price of suffering. All sincere Christians can join Padre Pio in the following prayer, which is taken from his meditations. Jesus, may nothing suffice to tear me from thee, neither life nor death. Following thee in life, bound passionately to thee, may it be granted me to die with thee on Calvary, to rise with thee in glory, to follow thee in tribulations and persecutions, one day to be made worthy of coming to love thee in the revealed glory of heaven, 
to sing to thee the hymn of thanksgiving for all thy suffering. Destroy in me all that is not of thy liking, and with the holy fire of thy charity, write upon my heart thy sufferings, and clasp me firmly to thee with a tie so tight and sweet that I shall nevermore forsake thee in thy sufferings. Prayer of the Church. O God, who by the glorious passion of thy Son have taught us to follow the way of the cross to arrive at eternal glory, grant in thy mercy that having lovingly accompanied Jesus up to Calvary, we may also ever follow him in his triumphant glory. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Saint Pio Petrocina.